Hey friends, this is Malki Asad and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm very excited to have this discussion with Dr. Basil Debo, who matched into one of the most competitive specialties in the US, orthopedic surgery. Dr. Debo, can you please start by introducing yourself to our viewers and giving highlights of your experience going from med school to orthopedic surgery in the US? Thank you very much, Melky. It's always an honor to uh, talk to you and congratulations on matching uh, to plastic. That's awesome. Uh, so I graduated from uh, Aleppo in 2010, and then I started um, thoracic surgery uh, residency for about a year and a half almost. Uh, and then at that time I decided to come to the US and uh, it was kind of like a, an emergency exit. So uh, I, didn't, I wasn't prepared for uh, um, tests or scores or anything. Uh, I didn't do any steps for uh, for the uh, for the journey, so I just landed here, um, trying to drop all those variables from my story. And so I started doing some research uh, with uh, NYU and then HSS uh, in Manhattan, and then uh, I submitted my application for uh, for orthopedic surgery residency. Probably after about four to five years of, uh, of research. I would like to start by asking about the secrets of matching into competitive specialties. Through your experience going from med school, residency, research, and matching into orthopedic surgery, what do you think is the secret to matching into orthopedic surgery or any other competitive specialty? Uh, the, the secret is uh, in simplification, I would say. You need to simplify the process. Uh, at the very beginning, if you are just a, a medical student, say in like third or fourth year, where you know, you're just trying to pass your tests in school and you don't know what's going on, uh, looking at doing orthopedics or plastic in the US sounds such a crazy idea to you. So uh, what I would, I, this is, and this is always my method in approaching any big problem, break it down. So if it is, and I always use this, this example, it's a big watermelon. And if you're going to try to eat it, you're going to break your jaws. So don't think this way, cut it, chop it. The first step for you to do is to pass your exams in a reasonable score. So you do this first. Um, some people shoot for crazy scores like 270 or 280 or 265. That's perfect if you can do it in a timely manner. But if you're going to spend two or three years trying to score high, this is technically dysfunctional because you need to move on. You need to do many checkpoints and, and check off your list a lot of variables before you becoming somebody in the conversation of matching into competitive specialty as a foreign graduate. So do well on your test, reasonably well. Shoot for 250. Guarantee 250, anything above that is perfect. And then after that, try to get your visas and could be the other way around, it doesn't matter. But my advice always is to do some tests while you are at home because it's more comfortable, you have your family support. It's better than just coming here, you know, a homeless person trying to do everything at once. Um, and then after you do your exams, you have your visa, you're here, then try to do research in the field that you're trying to get to. Don't dilute your efforts trying to do certain jobs that sounds medical, but they are not really uh, like, you know, whether it's an EMT or the ED scribe or something that, you know, our, our people do. And it's reasonable because you probably don't have the money. You probably don't have any opportunity. That's reasonable, but don't make it long. You know, try to reach out to institutions, try to find research jobs, even if it's free. Nobody's going to hire you forever for free. It's not, it's against the law anyway. You can volunteer for a few months and that's the tricky part here because some people really cannot survive in the U.S. for a few months. You know, it's expensive. So it is tricky. But if you find the solution for the first six months of your life in the U.S. financially, then you're set. And you are, of course, you're a hardworking person. You are going to go go for the job and whatever you get, you're going to make the, the most out of it. Then that's it. That's kind of a guaranteed success, I would say. These were really great points, Basil. I totally agree with you regarding the idea of scores. I know that so many applicants focus too much on scores and they ignore the other parts of their application, which is as important as scores matching into competitive specialties. And after a certain score, talking to program directors, talking to other residents, other applicants who match into these competitive specialties, I feel that after certain score, it doesn't make a huge difference. So as Basil said, if you can study one or two more weeks and may make the jump from 250 to 270, that's fine, you can do it. But if it's gonna take you two or three months or maybe a year to do that jump, you would rather use that time to do something more impactful to your application, such as research or clinical experience. I also wanna emphasize the point that Basel mentioned regarding doing your work in the field that you're applying to. Because if you do research within the same specialty 
you want to apply to, you would establish connections with these people. These specialties are closed. So if you know someone, if someone from one institution, they can introduce you to their colleagues from other institutions and that would optimize your chance of matching. While if you're working in another specialty or not in research, that will not help your application in the same way that research does. But as I'm looking at the applicants who match into competitive specialties, you see one common pattern, which is research. Most of these applicants have done one or two or even three years of research before matching. Why do you think research is important when looking to match into orthopedic surgery, plastic surgery, or other competitive specialties? Uh, simply enough, because there is no other way to, 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 to stand and separate yourself from the crowd. It's simple. Because what else you can do? You can't become taller. You cannot do anything like out of the usual. You're going to score well like every other U.S. applicant. So you're going to walk in with 250 and, you know, 260, step one and two, and then some volunteering experience with whatever, you know, Red Cross or something. That's not important. Because even if you do observership, of course, it helps you. Uh, integrate and understand the American culture, understand your patients, understand the way they explain their symptoms. But that doesn't doesn't necessarily you know directly count into you getting 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 residency. So that's why research is almost the only option, because you need to prove to somebody that you deserve getting this spot. And there's no way you can prove without working with this person or in the field of that person to show everyone in that field that you are worthy of this prize. It's a prize. If you think about it, it's a massive, massive prize. Nobody's going to hand you $30 million for, 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 to match into a competitive specialty. So for you to be worthy of this versus other U.S. graduates or other foreigners that are from probably more uh, better set up at baseline, like could be like French graduates, British graduates, all those guys have strong, strong medical schools and they are in the equation a little bit better than you. Uh, but you need to equalize. And the only way you can do that is, is through research. That's a, this is something that we've discussed previously when I was going through the match process regarding the timing of application. Some applicants do one year of research, some choose to do more. How do you know when is the optimal time to apply? How many publications do you need to have before you apply? How can you assess that? Uh, it's a great question, Melky. I think, uh, and I always use this example, if, if at a certain time point, you think that doing more research does not have any significant impact on your strength of your application, then you should go. So example, if, if you buy by second or third year of, of research, you're bombing like 40, 50, 60 publications, you are on any, every international and national podium presenting something new, people liking you, everybody in the field that you're trying to match into like you. Um, and, and remember those fields are small fields, you know, whether it's plastic, ortho, or surgery, all those fields are small fields, meaning like it's a, it's a limited circle. People know each other. You cannot hide. So if you do well, that's the, the upside. If you do well, everybody will know about you. So if by, by year number two or three, you think like, you know, your application is like, you know, 50, 60 pages, you look like a seller, you have like, you know, AOA, you have podiums, you have grants, then maybe doing one more year is not going to impact your application. It's the same concept of scoring on step one and two. If your MBME score is like 250, 250, just go for it. Because 260 is not gonna is not gonna make you or break you. Nor 265. Nobody's gonna be flipping from like the surprise and 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 excitement that you did 265. Program directors don't think this way. Did you do it well? Yes, then check. That's it. There's no more to the story. So same for research. If by year three you have five publications, you have few podiums here and there, posters in the make some papers in the submission, that's not really helpful. So you need to do more. I could not agree more about the idea of progress. Talking to a program director, they told me that as long as you're showing progress, as long as you're learning new skills, new experience, that is something good to have on your CV. But once you, you feel that you reached your peak, you have 100 papers. If you have 10 more or 20 more or even 100 more, it's not going to make a huge difference on your application because you already reached your peak. But if you have five papers and next year you might reach 30 or 40, that is worthwhile to continue doing research. So the decision on when to apply, how many publications, there is no one single answer. It depends on your overall application, your uh, scores, your clinical experience, your medical school. So I truly believe that the decision should be individualized and should be discussed with your mentors, your colleagues to see when is the best time for you to apply and get your best shot in the match.
Basil, I've heard that an elective is like a month of interview because you get to be evaluated every day for this four week rotation. But I feel that research, a year of research could be a year of interview because you also get to be evaluated by your interactions, how you deal with people. In your opinion, how important do you think it is the personality of the applicant fit within the program and understanding the culture of the US and the culture of the program? It's very important because residency is life. So it's, it's living with someone for five, six, seven years, depends on the specialty. So people need to know that you are normal enough to live with. So you take criticism well, you're not so sensitive, you're not like, um, you know, defensive all the time. You need to, to be just show that you can actually have a conversation with somebody, have a conversation with the patient, because there's a lot of problems in healthcare. You might face some, you know, disgruntled patient or angry patient that has been waiting in a waiting room outside in the clinic for hours. You need to have some sort of way to calm them down, to, to tell them that, hey, you know, I apologize for this. I really understand your situation, but I'm working hard on like trying to expedite the process. Unfortunately, we have so many patients. So there's a lot of things that you can uh, run into. So that's why the more you experience this relationship with, some, with, with the programs, the more you, you show them that you can handle this, the less anxious they are about taking you as a resident. So you need to work on this variable in addition to working on all the other things that we just talked about. I totally agree with you, Basil, and I feel that IMGs get stuck on scores, uh, research, clinical rotations. In, in forums, I always see, they say, I did not match. These are my scores, rotations, research. They don't get to evaluate the other aspects which are extremely important in the selection process, which is personality and fit. Yeah, they do. And, and it's, it, it, you know, it makes sense that they do because, I mean, if you jump and, and to those like... Uh, uh, forums or, or groups and you see like, oh, my experience as, as so-and-so in scoring this and that. There's nobody talking about how they were able to approach a program, how they were able to talk to patients, how they were able to adapt and integrate. So that's very, very important. And, and because in this day and age, everybody's scoring well. Everybody, nobody is applying to those specialties with low scores. So you're going to score well, but you're going to have to show that you are different whether you, you are more hardworking, you are more appreciative, appreciative of the opportunity that's given to you to be a plastic surgeon among thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that wish to be there. So that's why you need to show that you are worthy and deserve to take this and keep it and work hard after that. I wanted to ask you if there is any unique aspect about orthopedic surgery compared to other competitive specialties. Y yes and no. Uh, I would say yes because Orthopedics is a very chill field. People are, are nice, uh, they're funny, uh, they're very low drama and stress. At the same time, there's some perception about orthopedics that is, um, it's not as diverse as any other uh, specialties, which we have been trying to work on that uh, very, very strongly because I'm also close to, to the program director and the, and the advisory board and everybody, and we try to uh, uh, maintain what we have been doing for years actually in, in, in Brooklyn. Uh, we have a very diverse patient population and residents. So the U.S. is programs in general are moving forward with this. Um, so orthopedics will catch up more or will prove that they are not like that. Um, the second point is um, it's mostly, um, I would say it's an athletic um, a group of people. So if you want to try to show that you are somebody that is, you know, somewhat, you know, relatable, you can play some sports. You know, you can, you can do something that's, you know, football or hockey or, yeah, but there's nothing other, otherwise special about, about orthopedics versus other competitive specialties. It's just desirable. It's a nice lifestyle. Um, it's financially comfortable. And it's, it's a pleasant to be an orthopedic surgeon. It's, it's such a um, satisfying field, I would say. I'm moving on to our final question for today's video. Do you have any final advice, tips for applicants pursuing competitive specialties such as orthopedic surgery? Yeah, I would give them a couple of advices. First of all, uh, do not accept no as an answer. Um, uh, that being said, don't be pushy. Uh, but uh, always your eyes is on the yes. Uh, your eyes on only one yes, technically. You don't need to collect interviews and 15, 16 of them and try to satisfy yourself. And yeah, you know, I have multiple. No, you don't need that. You need a few of them. So make a list of the programs that you want to approach that you know they have taken a foreign graduates before. Apply to them, approach them, work with them, and, and then just work hard. And, and, and the second thing I would say that um, opportunities 
is like uh, thunder. They are not um, six hours of rain. So if you see a thunder, catch it. Because if you don't, it will go away. And sometimes that thunder would have carried you all the way to the end. So make sure when the opportunity comes, you know it is an opportunity and grab it because they don't come so often. And uh, that's pretty much it. Good luck to everyone. Thank you so much, Basil. That was an extremely insightful discussion about matching into orthopedic surgery. For our viewers, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malka Asad or my Facebook page, Malka Asad MD. If you find any value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified about future videos that I post related to the match process, experiences, or the USMLE exams. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos.